Hey everyone, this week I'm comparing this computer right here, this Windows PC, to this HP 8300 Elite used computer that I turned into a Hackintosh. That's right, we're doing this. Now I know what you're asking. Why are you making that comparison? That's not even apples to apples. That's not even apples to oranges. It's like apples to steaks. Well, I'm doing it because, well, because of Paul Herter. Who is Paul Herter? He's a man who made a comment on one of my videos. Now I thought I had crawled out of that rabbit hole that is called Hackintoshing. But all it took was one little comment and I fell right back in. Thanks, Paulie. My name is Timothy Sands, and this is Fashionable Father. If you're one of the lucky ones and have subscribed in the first year, welcome back. If you're new here, subscribe if you're so inclined. We have videos about fashion, we have videos about fatherhood, and we have videos about computers because apparently I'm a little obsessed with them. So a little backstory on this. I had a, or I have a Windows PC. When I first got into YouTube, I knew I needed an editing machine, so I actually custom built one. It was a really, really cool case, I must admit. So I think it's really stylish and I love my PC. This was after I had been running on a Mac for many a year. So I even made a video about Windows versus Mac. And that's where Polly comes in, because he decided to make a comment on that video and said, hey, why don't you just Hackintosh that bad boy? And now I went down the rabbit hole of Hackintosh and I said, no, I don't want to do Hackintosh because I'm not that savvy. I'm not that smart with computers and programming. So I thought, no, I don't want to mess with that, right? But all it took was Polly to spark that obsession. I tried to let go of it. I was even thinking of turning my main rig, my main editing rig into a Hackintosh, but I thought, no, that's not reliable enough. So I nixed that idea, but the obsession continued until I found this really, really cool video by the name of, what was his name? Quinn on Snazzy Labs took a computer, like $350 used computer that he got from a college and turned it into a Hackintosh. So I was inspired, of course, very much so. So I thought, hey, maybe I could do the same thing. The other side of this too, is the fact that I kind of came to the realization that what if I, instead of building a pretty expensive custom built computer had just taken a used computer and upgraded it. I'm starting to learn, especially now that I'm in the YouTube world and making videos on the weekly, that you kind of get obsessed with equipment and equipment is very expensive. And there's this want to want, you know, and we all have it. You get the item and you're like, oh, this is amazing. But the more of the obsession is the want, the anticipation of buying that item. And I was thinking, what if we just take used stuff? Why are we so concerned with future proofing? So that's what started this whole thing. So I found an HP 8300 Elite. And I thought, hey, let's Hackintosh this bad boy. I got this bad boy on eBay for out the door with taxes and everything, $76. It has four gigs of RAM. It has an i5-3470, I think. It has no hard drive. Hold on, I'll be right back. I got this bad boy off of Amazon for $33. It's a 240 gigabyte, 53 megabytes per second, um, solid state drive. This is super tiny. Then I got this bad boy. All right, here you go. Now, now I got some sun. I'm gonna try to put Catalina on this thing. So who knows if this will work, but uh, we'll see. I am trying to update the BIOS. Apparently I have to do that in order to get this bad boy going as a Mac. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let's 
So that was a success. Nice. So let's go to system information and it's version 2.99. Thank you, Tony Mac. I'm going to now start the uh, computer from this USB drive that I, flash drive, that I um, went through and configured with Clover and <laughs> Catalina. Enough. So I had the wrong Clover on my uh, USB install. So I totally revamped my my uh, flash drive and um, boom, right? What up? That's right. We are moving, we're cooking with gas. That is on a, uh, it's on this old thing right here. All right, so. No. <laughs> my no. wife, my wife just yelled at me. No. No. That's right, Arthur. You tell Daddy. <laughs> so, uh, we are breaking back into this bad boy to see if we can accomplish anything new this week. Um, got the Catalina on this bad boy, and it was running. However, the graphics card, I looked up and down, I searched, I tried to find something that would actually like be a workaround for it. And uh, there was none. I'm gonna have to get rid of this. This is not working. But the 4100, I guess does. I'm gonna slot the 4100 in. Bam! I got me an up and running Hackintosh. That's right, look at that beast. Boom, boom. All right, real quick, I need to sing the praises of Teresa and her channel called Marganaut. She does a lot of stuff on Hackintoshing and she has a step-by-step -step guide on how to do a vanilla install, which is this. And if you follow it to the T, you will be able to make a Hackintosh. It actually does a really, really good job with that. And I'll link that video um, below and also in the cards. I'm super impressed with my setup, I must admit. It's a little excessive. I even got a, I've got a switch back here so I can switch from, from my Hackintosh to the, to the PC. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool, it's handy. Uh, I've had a few weeks to mess with it and I'm very, very impressed and obviously satisfied with my handiwork. I didn't think I'd be able to accomplish this. Well, I knew I would be able to, but I didn't think it was gonna be, I'd be this happy with the with the outcome. I have edited with it. it. It scrubs through 1080 footage like butter. It's perfectly fine. I have not tested its 4K. I think I would have to step it up a little bit, maybe, maybe more RAM and maybe even um, a better processor if for 4K because I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed in the render. Uh, times the render times are pretty long, especially if I I up some uh, 1080 footage to 4k and it took like I think two minutes and 4k took like 20 minutes um, Waking from sleep for some reason is finicky. It sleeps just fine. Uh, everything seems to operate just fine. I even looked for um, Errors when it went to sleep and there's no errors. So I think it's the monitor. It's an LG monitor and I've read up online that it might be a monitor issue. And tell me in the comments if if you can tell me that, why it's not waking from sleep. All I have to do is take the HDMI cable out and put it, plug it back in and it works fine. So I, I don't, the question is, does it compete with my $1,500 PC, Windows PC? And no, of course not, it doesn't. Uh, that thing is, you know, I love this computer. It's it's amazing. It does everything I need it to do and it's super quick. And of course, you know, it's a custom built computer. So no, it's not competing. However, the fact that it is a quarter of the price and that's because I went cheap. I mean, just throwing a little bit more money into this bad boy and it would be a finely 
it would be a machine that would run just fine. And I, I, like I said, I haven't really tested the 4K, but I imagine I could even throw some 4K footage in this. Yes, my render times would be a little longer, probably a lot longer, but still you can walk away from your computer. If it's scrubbing through 4K footage and you don't have to do like proxies or you have to de-res your footage and all that stuff, I mean, I don't know. That It's definitely shooken me up a little bit. I love my computer. I really do. I love my computer. I love the design of it. You know me, philosophy here, style first. Look at how silent that thing is. I mean, come on, who has that case? Except for a few cool people who watched that first video. But you know, it's something else about the style of taking something that other people think is useless and making it new, making it totally worthwhile. And I think we get obsessed with, with like I said before, the future proof. And, and I think that's a ruse that makes us want to consume more stuff for no reason. It's the want to want. It's I'm, I'm better than anybody else because I have the nice stuff. And if you think about it, people are throwing stuff away that is completely useful. This computer I got for $76. I mean, like I said, if I had just probably spent a little more money, I got an i7 processor instead of an i5, throw a little more money into the RAM, um, maybe even do a whole different case so I can put some different graphics cards in there. And I've got a finely tuned machine that will edit 4K footage right now. And I think that's the other thing, like especially with software, I think your hardware should be equal with your software. I don't think your hardware should ever be ahead. And I think a lot of people think that differently than that. And I just don't agree. If your software is right with hardware, then when your software becomes unusable, you just get a little more hardware. And if you have an upgradable computer, you can do that. And that is kind of the rub with Mac. It's kind of, they make their computers not upgradable until this brand new, uh, what, Apple Pro Mac thing that is $6,000 out the door, bare minimum? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, especially for someone who's, you know, just struggling along trying to make some YouTube videos. So I wouldn't have changed my mind. I still would have built this computer no matter what. I love my computer, it's awesome. But for anybody who's on a budget, and if I, maybe if, uh, I had to do things over. I might even just get a used computer, upgrade the crap out of it, and boom, you got an awesome machine. So that's what I feel like I learned from this. That's why I hope you take away from this. Hit me in the comments below. What would you do? What would you, would you, would you spend $500 on a used computer or $1,500 on a custom built new computer, right? What would you do? So this is my Hackintosh. Uh, I love it. It's cool. Uh, it edits. It does its thing and um, you know, I can still mess around the Apple world and <laughs> not for $6,000. <laughs> Anyways, my name is Timothy Sands. This is my story of fashion and fatherhood. Like that video if you got any value from it. Subscribe if you're so inclined. We've got a lot of videos coming. I do this on a weekly and I'm enjoying myself. So join me on this ride and always remember, always remember style first. All right. <laughs> so close this app and the app store too. Now connect A.